Welcome back, everyone. It's Charlie. Marvel has a brand new Daredevil Born Again teaser for a huge fight of Daredevil versus Bullseye. Big rematch fight scene after the end of Daredevil Season 3, Bullseye getting his new adamantium spine. It looks like Karen Page is one of his new targets, so we'll say a prayer for her. And we have a nice shiny look at what their new comic book suits are going to look like, and they are way more comic book accurate, so we'll break it all down. If you're brand new to the channel, be sure to subscribe to get all the episodes. There's a bunch of big stuff coming up. It's a big week for Marvel because we have the Super Bowl, the Deadpool 3 trailer is going to be coming this weekend. Of course, I will do all the Super Bowl trailer videos possible. Just starting with the biggest stuff first here, the new Daredevil suit, new Bullseye suit, and Daredevil vs. Bullseye rematch fight finally. Daredevil's new suit looks just like the Netflix red suit, only he's upgraded the front and back a little. Like, the front is all red now with just a very little bit of black. It's a little bit more like the comics, but sadly no Daredevil symbol on the front yet. More on that in a second, because I think this scene might be a flashback, so the suit might change multiple times through the course of the series. And Bullseye's new comic book suit looks like a combination of Marco Checho's Bullseye suit from 2017 and Bullseye's costume during the Chip Zdarsky Daredevil run. It's a great way to reintroduce the characters, and it's a great start, like this is the first of probably many different comic book costumes. And it does fit with the more gritty, realistic tone and vibe of the Daredevil Netflix series. Only bummer, though, is that there is no actual Bullseye target on the forehead. Maybe, maybe at some point that will change. I'm not expecting them to reference Bullseye's adamantium spine from the comics specifically. At the end of the original Daredevil Netflix series, he was getting his new spine, but at the time they had a rights issue where they couldn't use the term adamantium because Fox still owned the X-Men and the rights to use the term adamantium, so nobody in the MCU connected or even the Netflix series, anybody outside of Fox could use the term adamantium. So the Daredevil Season 3 showrunner said that they had to come up with some different story for the Bullseye character for his spine. And in that version, they were going to say that Dr. Kenji Oyama here, who was the person in Marvel Comics who did canonically create the process Weapon X used to bond adamantium to Wolverine Skeleton. So in the comics, he was behind all of this adamantium. But because when they were actually making Daredevil Season 3, the Netflix universe was still treated like it was separate from the MCU and separate from the Fox X-Men stuff, they weren't legally allowed to use adamantium. So they were going to say that he replaced Bullseye's spine with a metal alloy called Cogmium. Sort of like their discount copyright safe version of MCU adamantium that had been developed in the Netflix universe by Oracle, a subsidiary of Iron Fist Company in those Netflix Defender shows. So Iron Fist was going to be responsible for Bullseye's new indestructible spine. Indestructible metal spine like Wolverine, but copyright safe so they didn't get sued by Fox at the time. What a difference a couple years makes. During the original Marvel comics, like way back in the classic Daredevil comics, Dr. Kenji Oyama was from Japan and developed what he called the adamantium process. Those notes were later stolen from him by the people running Weapon X, and they used the process to give Wolverine his adamantium skeleton. So this doctor was canonically meant to be the reason why Wolverine has his adamantium skeleton. Now in present day of the Marvel movies, Kevin Feige is finally introducing adamantium in the MCU during Captain America 4, using that dead celestial in the Indian Ocean. Apparently they're just going to say that adamantium grows naturally on his body. They're finally going to deal with that dead celestial everyone's been asking them about since it debuted at the end of the Eternals movie. The only real reference that any movies or shows had made to it since then was during the She-Hulk episodes of all places, where there was a joke reference about a giant man being stuck in the ocean. Turns out the reason why no movies taking place after the Eternals on Earth in the timeline have dealt with those consequences yet is Marvel was just saving the storyline for Captain America 4. And once adamantium is discovered on Tiamat's body, the entire world wants their hands on it like companies, world governments, and Val basically wants to get everything for the United States before everybody else gets their hands on it. Originally, I kind of thought they were going to use the Thunderbolts movie in the Thunderbolts team to cover that, but it might just happen during Captain America 4. Basically, the takeaway is now we have adamantium inside the MCU. Also, because Marvel got the X-Men rights back, they can use the concept of adamantium, Weapon X, Wolverine now. So you kind of see what's going on in the background of all the movies. They're laying the track work in the MCU for a new version of Weapon X and Wolverine, but we won't actually see that new MCU Wolverine actor that they're going to recast till after Hugh Jackman is done playing his version of Wolverine in Avengers Secret Wars. During the fight scene, it looks like Bullseye's trying to kill Karen Page at Josie's bar because in the other scenes they released, Matt, Foggy, Karen were having fun at Josie's until an argument between them broke out. 
If you saw people in your feed wondering if Bullseye was going to kill Karen Page, getting worried about that, that's because Bullseye killed her in the comics. She's supposed to be in at least three episodes of the new Daredevil Born Again series, so I don't expect her to be killed. But from the looks of Daredevil's fight with him, Bullseye gets at least a couple shots off at Karen and he tries to stop him. So maybe Bullseye, like maybe, lands a shot on her, but doesn't kill her, just wounds her very badly. It kind of seems like we should be saying our prayers for Foggy Nelson because he's the one on the ground here, so maybe he actually takes the bullet for Karen Page. I'm going to go on a limb here and say that because they were going to kill Foggy in the original version of the show, they probably didn't in this version, so he's probably the one that just gets severely wounded. A lot of people seeing red flashing warning lights here. This will probably seem like a familiar scenario. They kind of did a version of this during Daredevil Season 3 where Bullseye was going after Matt Murdock's friends. This is really just meant to be the continuation of that. You might remember talk of the original version of the show before Kevin Feige put the brakes on, like fired a bunch of the showrunner to the writers and then hired on a bunch of new people to come fix the show and make a better version of it. Basically hiring a bunch of the Netflix people to come back and make the show even better. Right now, the showrunner from the Punisher Netflix series is working on this with some of the Loki writers. So, like, a lot of the core staff, even the stunt coordinators from the Netflix series are back and working on this. But in the original canceled version of Daredevil Born Again, they were supposed to have killed Karen Page and Foggy Nelson before the present day of the series picks up. Which is why I think this scene is actually similar to what they'd originally planned, but Bullseye really did wind up killing Karen Page somehow. And part of the idea with the aborted version of Daredevil Born Again, like we don't need to worry about it now, but in the aborted version, he wasn't actually going to wear the Daredevil suit in present day until like episode four. When it picks up, they were going to give him his own version of Spider-Man No More. Like they kind of did a version of that during Tobey Maguire's Spider-Man 2, where he throws the costume away briefly during the movie, then puts it back on eventually. Daredevil was going to have a version of that at the beginning of Daredevil Born Again. And it was going to be because he couldn't save or he couldn't protect Foggy Nelson and Karen Page. Both of them were supposed to have died. All these scenes of the Bullseye rematch fight scene just makes it feel like that might have been different in the original version of the show. And in this new version, she won't wind up dying. Here's where we actually get to the timing of the actual episode here, this fight scene. I think the actual fight scene goes down during episode one. And it might be part of flashbacks to explain what happens before the snap. Just based on Foggy Nelson's haircut from the new pilot episode that they were filming a couple days ago. If you remember back in the day after the Game of Thrones season 5 finale, we all did the Jon Snow Kit Harrington hair watch for like a year to see if he would cut his hair and use that as confirmation that he would come back and film new scenes in Game of Thrones season 6. Like, see, his hair's still the exact same. Normally, he would cut his hair if he wasn't going to come back. Now we're using Foggy Nelson's facial hair to do the same thing. Like, he got a big glow up from Daredevil season 3. Last week, they were filming a scene at their new law firm, Murdoch, Nelson, and Page, paying off the Daredevil Season 3 ending with them creating the new law firm, so it's been a bit of a time jump. They're all in their plain clothes, having fun, joking with each other, heading out on the town, looking like they're heading to Josie's bar. What might be happening at the beginning of Episode 1 is they might do a flashback to explain what happened to everyone before the snap, because we know that Daredevil is around during the five-year time jump, so he didn't get snapped we know the Kingpin was around too during that five-year time jump, so he also did not get snapped because that's where that whole Echo fight scene takes place and where Kingpin pulls her out of police custody. The other reason why I think they're going to have scenes that take place before the snap, like before the five-year time jump, is because there was a newspaper on set while they were filming that brand new version of episode one. And it features a newspaper that talks about Kingpin's run for mayor and whether or not he's going to be able to fix New York City. Like it talks about his plan to fix the city and whether or not it's going to help him win the mayorship. And I think in the present day of the series, he's already meant to have become mayor. Like he'll have won the election already. So I just think episode one is going to have a couple time jumps to explain what's happened since the end of Daredevil season three, kind of catch people up to present day. In most of the series will take place in the year 2026, well after the events of Spider-Man No Way Home. Another good example, the present day of the Echo series, those episodes were meant to take place after the events of Spider-Man No Way Home. So like he gets the idea to run for mayor well after Spider-Man No Way Home, then several months later eventually winds up winning the mayorship. So I think the way we get to this Daredevil versus Bullseye rematch fight scene is the moment with Bullseye's attack is meant to take place later in the night or is connected to the moment of them leaving their law office. And it looks like Matt and Foggy get into some kind of argument outside Josie's bar before the Bullseye attack. 
Then it seems like Bullseye attacks, Daredevil changes into his suit, they fight, Daredevil barely saves Karen Page, and they might just use this fight scene the way it goes down to set up more of the circumstances in the present day of the show and explain a little bit more about why Daredevil is the way he is during the five-year time jump because he almost failed to protect Karen Page. An early theory, if Foggy gets badly injured trying to save Karen Page or take the bullet for her, he will be back later in the series, as well as Karen Page. And part of what's going on here with the fight scene too is this is meant to play into Kingpin's run for mayor because he runs on an anti-vigilante campaign. Like, see, look at all these terrible vigilantes causing all this damage all around New York City. My plan is to get rid of all this, but really he's just being shady Kingpin, using it as an excuse to get rid of Daredevil, Spider-Man, the Punisher, other heroes who are also kind of like vigilantes. Kevin Feige keeps talking about how the events of Daredevil Born Again are going to set up Spider-Man 4. The version that they're trying to make of Spider-Man 4 is more of a ground-level, friendly neighborhood Spider-Man movie. Daredevil and Kingpin are supposed to be in it. What they could do is they could just have Kingpin hire a lot of the Sinister Six villains or other Spider-Man villains, and then they could go after Spider-Man in the movie. This gets a little deeper into the whole Spider-Man-related plot of all things, but a lot of people wondering how they're going to pay off that Venom symbiote post credit scene during Spider-Man No Way Home. What they always could do is they could use Matt Gargan, who's the Scorpion inside the MCU, and they could give him the symbiote first. If you haven't read the Spider-Man or the Venom comics, Matt Gargan did get the symbiote in the comics. He did become a version of Venom after Eddie Brock. I still think it's a little early to give Spider-Man the symbiote during Spider-Man 4, but they eventually do want to pay that off inside the MCU, so they could save that for like Spider-Man 5 or Spider-Man 6 or whatever they want to do. Because we still have Avengers Secret Wars, there's even Avengers 5 before that, and it would be cool to see him get the symbiote during a version of Secret Wars just so they could do more comic book accurate stuff. But the other really good news you may, maybe you haven't heard about it, is that Marvel is supposedly reviving other dead shows the same way that they're bringing back Daredevil, the X-Men animated series, other Defenders characters are coming back like Jessica Jones, the Iron Fist character, not just Danny Rand, but all versions of Iron Fist from across the timeline. Maybe the Cloak and Dagger characters, Runaways, but even bigger, I think, Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. characters. A lot of people have been asking about this for a long time. Like, when are we going to see Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. characters show up like Chloe Bennett? Look, this is me now when at the Saturn Awards talking to Kevin Foggy. You can make all the jokes you want about this. Like, look at her explaining to Kevin Foggy, asking him why Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. characters are not in brand new Marvel movies yet. Technically, they have had Coulson back, but in flashbacks, so it doesn't really count the same way. We're talking about present day. There are a lot of reasons to complain about Secret Invasion, but one of my biggest hopes that they had actually worked in Chloe Bennett in some kind of cameo scene, and she'd just been working for Nick Fury on his Sabre space station. Maybe like a light reference on a monitor in the background, it doesn't have to be a big cameo, just like a small reference to the character. Even if they don't have big plans for those Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. characters right now in present day, that's totally fine. Just referencing the characters would be enough. Like, oh yeah, by the way, these characters exist. They're out there off on missions, busy doing things. They'll show up eventually. But they're going to be filming Daredevil Born Again for a while, so we'll probably get some more footage from the actual set, some more first looks at the different characters. The other big reminder, we have the Deadpool 3 trailer this weekend, a bunch of other big trailers. Of course, I will do all the videos. Click here for my brand new Deadpool 3 video, and click here to learn about Marvel bringing back Thanos. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next one.